Last week, a man in his late 50s, we'll call him Alan, walked into my emergency department. He didn't have crushing chest pain or some dramatic injury. He came in because he just didn't feel right. He was tired, his feet were a bit swollen and he'd lost his appetite. He'd been chalking it all up to getting older, working too hard, maybe a little stress. He was worried but not panicked. He figured he had a stomach bug or was just run down. But my job as a physician is to be a detective, to connect the dots between symptoms that seem totally random. And when I saw Alan's lab results, it confirmed a suspicion that had been building as I talked to him. His minor annoyances weren't minor at all. They were the quiet, insidious whispers of a major organ system in distress. Alan was in kidney failure. This is a scenario I see far too often. Kidney disease is a silent epidemic. Over 37 million people in the United States have chronic kidney disease, and the vast majority, an astonishing 90%, don't even know it. Why? Because the early signs are incredibly subtle, easy to dismiss, and easy to ignore until the damage is severe. Today, I'm going to walk you through the exact warning signs that Alan missed. We'll break down each one understand why it happens, and most importantly, what you should do if you recognize any of this in yourself or someone you love. This isn't about fear-mongering. It's about empowerment. Recognizing these signs early can be the difference between managing a chronic condition and facing a life-threatening emergency. Section 1. The Deceptive Symptom – Unrelenting Fatigue the first thing Alan mentioned, almost as an afterthought, was his fatigue. Doc, I'm just tired all the time, he said. I get a full eight hours, but by lunchtime I feel like I've run a marathon. I just don't have any pep anymore. This is by far one of the most common and most ignored symptoms of kidney disease. We all get tired, life is busy, but the fatigue that comes with kidney dysfunction is a whole different animal. It's a profound, bone-deep exhaustion that sleep doesn't fix. It's a feeling of being completely spent, even with minimal effort. So, what's going on here? It boils down to two main things. First, healthy kidneys produce a vital hormone called erythropoietin, or EPO. Think of EPO as the drill sergeant for your bone marrow, shouting orders to produce red blood cells. These cells are the oxygen delivery trucks for your entire body. When your kidneys are damaged, they can't make enough EPO. The drill sergeant is off duty. Production of red blood cells grinds to a halt, leading to a condition called anemia. With fewer oxygen trucks on the road, your muscles and your brain become starved for oxygen. The result isn't just tiredness, it's a profound weakness. Walking up a flight of stairs can feel like climbing a mountain. The second culprit is the kidney's main job, filtering out waste. When your kidneys fail, toxins and waste products build up in your blood. This is a condition called uremia, which literally means urine in the blood. This toxic sludge slows everything down, contributing to that overwhelming exhaustion and an inability to concentrate. Alan had been blaming his fatigue on age and stress for over a year. He was pounding more coffee, but nothing touched the exhaustion. The key takeaway is this. Do not dismiss persistent deep fatigue that rest doesn't resolve. It's a perfectly valid reason to see your doctor. Ask for a simple blood test called a complete blood count, CBC, to check for anemia. It's a straightforward test that can give a massive clue about what's happening under the surface. Section 2. The misinterpreted sign changes in urination. Next on Alan's list of minor issues were changes in his urination. This is a little embarrassing, he said, but I'm getting up three or four times a night to go to the bathroom. And during the day, my urine looks bubbly, foamy almost. Many people think peeing a lot is a sign of healthy kidneys. But when it comes to your kidneys, quality matters far more than quantity. 
One of the first things struggling kidneys lose is their ability to concentrate urine. This is most obvious at night. Normally, your body releases a hormone that tells your kidneys to produce less, more concentrated urine so you can sleep. Damaged kidneys can't respond to that signal. They just keep producing dilute, watery urine, forcing you to get up again and again. This nighttime urination, called nocturia, is one of the earliest clues of chronic kidney disease. Then there's the foam. Alan's bubbly urine was a critical clue. Think of your kidneys' filters like a superfine kitchen strainer. Their job is to let waste and water pass into the urine but hold back bigger things, like protein. When those filters are damaged, the holes get bigger and protein, most often one called albumin, leaks out of the blood and into the urine. When this protein hits the toilet water, it acts just like egg whites when you whisk them. It creates foam. Foamy urine, especially if you have to flush a couple of times to get rid of it, is a major red flag for protein in the urine or proteinuria. The action step here is simple. Pay attention to what's in the bowl. Are you getting up multiple times a night? Is your urine consistently foamy or an unusual colour? Bring these specific observations to your doctor. A simple urine test can detect protein and blood, giving a direct window into your kidney health. Section 3. The getting old symptom. Swelling in the feet and ankles. My wedding ring is tight and by the end of the day, my socks leave deep marks on my ankles, Alan told me. I figured my feet are just swollen because I'm on them all day. It's just part of getting old, right? Wrong. While a little swelling can be normal, what Alan was describing is a classic sign of kidney dysfunction called edema. Your kidneys are the master regulators of your body's fluid balance. A huge part of that is managing sodium. When your kidneys are failing, they can't remove sodium and excess fluid effectively. This extra sodium makes your body hold on to water. Gravity pulls this extra fluid down, which is why swelling is most common in the feet, ankles and legs. You might notice your shoes feeling tight or puffiness that wasn't there before. Some people also see it in their hands or as puffiness around their eyes, especially in the morning. A key sign of concern is pitting edema. This is what Alan had. If you press your thumb firmly into a swollen area, like your shin, and it leaves an indentation, a pit, that lingers for a few seconds, that's a sign of significant excess fluid trapped in the tissue. That's not just a long day on your feet. So, if you have new, persistent swelling in your legs, ankles, or hands, do the pitting test. Press firmly on your shin for five seconds. If a pit remains, that is not normal aging. It's a sign of fluid retention that needs to be evaluated by a doctor as it can point to kidney, heart, or liver problems. Section 4. The alarming symptom. Shortness of breath. As I kept talking with Alan, he mentioned something that raised the stakes considerably. Lately, he said, I get out of breath just walking to the mailbox. Shortness of breath is always an alarming symptom and it connects to the kidneys in two major ways. First, it's a direct result of the fluid buildup we just discussed. If fluid can build up in your ankles, it can also build up in your lungs. This is a serious condition called pulmonary edema. The air sacs in your lungs fill with fluid and you essentially feel like you're drowning. It's often worse when lying flat. The second cause goes right back to our first symptom, anemia. When you have a shortage of red blood cells, your body is starved for oxygen. Even with minimal exertion, your body screams for more oxygen than your blood can deliver. This leaves you feeling breathless, even after doing very little. Alan's shortness of breath was a terrifying one-two punch of both. Fluid was seeping into his lungs, and his severe anemia meant he wasn't getting enough oxygen to begin with. This is a sign that kidney disease has become advanced and potentially life-threatening. Here's the bottom line. Shortness of breath is never normal. If you're getting breathless with minimal effort or can't catch your breath, you need to seek medical attention immediately. This isn't something to wait and see. Section 5. The Annoying Symptom Persistent, maddening itching. This might be the strangest thing, Doc, 
Alan said, scratching his arm. For months, I've had this itch. It's everywhere, and nothing helps. It drives me crazy, especially at night. This often puzzles patients, but it's a classic sign of advanced kidney disease. This isn't a mosquito bite or simple dry skin. It's a deep, relentless itch that lotions don't relieve. The cause is, once again, the kidney's failure as filters. They don't just remove waste, they also maintain a precise balance of minerals in your blood, like phosphorus. When the kidneys fail, phosphorus levels can build up in the blood. This, along with the buildup of other uremic toxins, irritates nerve endings in the skin, causing severe widespread itching. So if you have persistent generalized itching that you can't explain and that isn't solved with standard moisturizers, it's worth mentioning to your doctor it can be a clue that there's a systemic issue like poor kidney function rather than just a skin deep problem. Section 6. The appetite killer. Metallic taste and bad breath. One of the things that finally pushed Alan to come to the ER was his complete loss of appetite. Food just has no appeal, he explained. And when I do eat, everything has this weird metallic taste, like I'm chewing on old pennies. This is another telltale sign of uremia, the buildup of waste in the blood. The primary waste product is urea. When urea levels get very high, some of it breaks down into ammonia in your saliva. That ammonia causes both the unpleasant, metallic taste, dysgeusia, and bad breath, sometimes described as smelling like ammonia or urine. It's no surprise that when your food tastes like metal, you lose your desire to eat. This often leads to an aversion to meat and can cause unintentional weight loss, which Alan had also experienced. This isn't just unpleasant, it can lead to malnutrition when the body is already under immense stress. If you notice a persistent metallic taste that's changing your appetite, don't just write it off. When combined with these other symptoms, it can be a strong indicator of advancing kidney disease. Section 7. The Cognitive Symptom. Brain Fog. The final piece of Alan's puzzle was something his wife had noticed. He was having trouble concentrating at work, forgetting things, and sometimes seemed confused. He felt like he was in a constant state of brain fog. This is one of the most frightening symptoms. The same two culprits are at play, anemia and toxins. Your brain is an oxygen-hungry organ. When anemia starves the brain of oxygen, you can experience memory problems, dizziness, and difficulty concentrating. On top of that, the high level of uremic toxins in the blood can directly impact brain function. This can range from mild confusion to, in severe cases, profound lethargy and even coma. Alan wasn't just tired, his brain was literally being impacted by his failing kidneys. Cognitive changes like brain fog or new confusion should always be taken seriously. If they're happening alongside fatigue, swelling or these other signs, it's crucial to get a medical evaluation. The turning point and diagnosis. After connecting all the dots, the fatigue, the nocturia, the swelling, the shortness of breath, the itching, the metallic taste and the brain fog, I knew we had to check his kidney function immediately. We ran a simple blood test to measure creatinine, a waste product that healthy kidneys filter out. A high creatinine level means the kidneys aren't doing their job. When the lab results came back, my heart sank. His creatinine was sky high. His kidneys were functioning at less than 15% of normal. He was in end-stage kidney disease. The symptoms he'd been dismissing for months had brought him to the brink of a life-threatening crisis. We had to admit him to the hospital right away to start emergency dialysis to save his life. Prevention. Your action plan. Alan's story is a wake-up call, but it's meant to end in action, not fear. If kidney disease is caught early, its progression can often be slowed or even stopped. Alan's journey will now be one of dialysis and waiting for a transplant. A journey we might have prevented if the signs were recognised sooner. So what can you do? First, know your risk factors. The two biggest causes of kidney disease are high blood pressure and diabetes. If you have either, you must be vigilant. 
Aggressively managing your blood sugar and blood pressure is the single most important thing you can do to protect your kidneys. Second, get tested. If you have high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, or a family history of kidney failure, you should be getting tested annually. This involves two simple tests, an EGFR blood test to see how well your kidneys are filtering and a urine ACR test to check for that protein, albumin. Third, reconsider certain medications, over-the-counter non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs like ibuprofen and naproxen, can be hard on the kidneys if taken too often for too long. If you use these for chronic pain, talk to your doctor about kidney-safe alternatives. And fourth, live a kidney-friendly lifestyle. This isn't complicated. Reduce your salt intake, eat a balanced diet, stay hydrated, and if you smoke, quitting is one of the best things you can do for your entire body. Alan's story highlights a crucial truth. Your body often whispers before it screams. Those non-specific symptoms, the fatigue, the swelling, the subtle changes, were his kidneys whispering. The shortness of breath was the beginning of the scream. Please, listen to your body. Don't dismiss persistent changes as just getting older or stress. Early detection is everything. It can be the difference between a few lifestyle changes and a lifetime of dialysis. If you found this helpful and want to learn more about how to understand your health and decode these critical warning signs from a real-life doctor, please subscribe and turn on notifications. The knowledge you gain could truly save a life, maybe even your own. If this has kindled your desire to learn more about early warning signs your body gives you, please watch this video on the left.